Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to do something quite important, which is the Hessian matrix and its relationship with second order directional derivatives. So you have a function of n variables, this is a real valued function, scalar function of n variables x1 to xn, and assume you have two unit vectors u and v. They could be equal, they could be different. Okay. Okay. Now the Hessian of f is defined as what? Yeah. The Jacobian of the gradient of f. Yeah, that's sort of like taking the second derivative, right? Because the gradient would just be the first derivative. But then to differentiate a vector valued function, you have to take the Jacobian. And that's give, giving you the second derivative, essentially. Okay. And what kind of a creature is the Hessian? It's a n cross n matrix valued function. Why do we get n cross n? The first time the gradient vector is a n dimensional output and so if n dimensional inputs, n dimensional output, so you get n cross n matrix valued functions. Yeah. Something? No. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to compute the second order directional derivative. What do I mean by that? I want to say what is the, what is this? So I have direction derivative of f in the direction of u. And I want to take the direction derivative of that in the direction of v. So it's sort of like a second order partial. But now I'm not restricting myself to just these inputs. I'm allowing take any unit vectors. Okay. Actually, we don't need them to be unit vectors to do what I'm saying. But since I'm using the term directional derivative, that term is typically used only when you have unit vectors. Okay. So, I mean, the definition which I gave for direction derivative, that can actually be used for non-unit vectors. It just wouldn't be called a directional derivative. Uh, in the way we usually use the use the term. Okay, so what is dv of duf? So this is so we recall that du of f is just u dot the gradient vector. Okay, so what is this? This is dv of u dot the gradient vector. Okay, what is this? Well, this is the directional derivative of a dot product of two vector valued functions. You know how to do that? Well, we just saw that in another way. Well, you'd have to use the product rule for the Jacobian. Oh, so right? In product rule. Yeah. Um, but in this case, u is a constant. Right? Mm -hmm. So what would this become? This will become... Well, if you just use that, so it's, if you just use that Jacobian thing, well, what did it say? Let me just write that down on a separate sheet. Here. dv of a dot b equals what? Well, in general, it's a transpose jb v plus B transpose JAV. Well, actually, I wrote them down in the other order. Mm -hmm. I wrote this first and that first, but it doesn't matter mm -hmm. for now. Because I typically write the derivative of the first thing first. But it doesn't matter. It's just the sum of these two. Now, in case that, uh, in the case that, that A is a constant, what did this become? Just mm -hmm. the first part of this. Yeah. So in the other video, I actually wrote them in the other order. This one first and that one later, doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. So, in our case, what will that be? So A is U, okay, which is a constant. B is nabla F. So what do we get? Hmm? We will get transpose of... Yeah. What do we get? U transpose times what? J of nabla F times V. Okay, now I just want to clarify what I'm using. So I'm, I'm thinking of U and V as column vectors. So U transpose is just the row vector for U. Okay, and V is just a column vector for V. 
okay and now i can simplify that what is or rather rewrite that what is j of nabla f what is the jacobian of the gradient better known as hf okay so that is u transpose h f v okay so u transpose this will just check the dimension so u transpose is 1 cross n right mm -hmm. this is well, everything is n now. There's no m's here, yeah. And uh, this, when you multiply all three, you get one. one cross one. Okay. So the second order direction derivative, as you expect, it should just be a scalar. Okay. And this works whether both in cases where u and v are equal, in which case it's just a pure second order partial, it or when u and v are not equal, in which case it's like a mixed second order. Well. Partial. I, I shouldn't say partial uh, directional derivatives, but it's it's sort of similar to the theory of partial derivatives. Except now we do, we are not restricted to just taking the coordinate directions. We can take arbitrary directions. Okay.